Hello and welcome to the Ferguson Library's live streamed technology class. Today we're going to be working on, we're going to be looking at basic Microsoft Word. Uh, so I'm Frank Scornia. I am the digital librarian for adult and information services here at the Ferguson Library, which means I handle our computer classes and our digital resources, books and databases. So I figure out all the computer classes and schedules and for the month of April, I will be most of the uh, classes here at the Ferguson Library. So moving into, we are looking today at Microsoft Word Basic. So some of the things that this class will be covering, we're going to be looking at how to open, save, and create new Microsoft Word documents. We're going to look at the backstage view in Microsoft Word, which is just their fancy kind of like interface for dealing with like settings and file and opening files and saving files and printing. It's all, they just call it the backstage view on there. We're gonna look at copying and pasting in a Word document, and then we're gonna look at some basic text formatting and keyboard shortcuts. Next week, on Tuesday at the same time from two to four, I will be uh, doing our intermediate Word class, which will kind of take like a next step and look at some more of the things that we're able to do in Microsoft Word. Uh, for now, we're just gonna look at these kind of basic tasks and kind of get you familiar with what Microsoft Word 2016? We're looking today. We're looking at 2016. I'm using Microsoft Word 365, but they're about the same on there. Any slight differences? Uh, let me know. If you have any questions, please post them into the chat. There is a slight delay between uh, what I'm covering and what you're probably seeing. Send it into the chat. I will see it and I will get to it when I feel there's a good opportunity to go back and recover the questions on there. So thank you for that, and let's get into going here. So we are going to jump right in and take a look at Microsoft Word. So this is, when you open up Word for the first time, this is generally what you will see. Uh, this is kind of their, uh, this, this is actually part of the backstage view that we'll look at when we kind of go in. But this year basically it tells you, it gives you access to a bunch of your recent uh, Microsoft Word files that you've worked on. As you can see, I've been working on a bunch of things actually for these classes. Uh, so a bunch of the handouts and everything kind of going on. Uh, you have your ability to kind of go in and start creating a, a new documents up here. So most most times you're going to come up here and you're just going to click this blank document. Uh, actually, I think it's like a double click on there. And we'll see that when I second. Uh, and you'll just go right into your blank Word document. It is possible to go in and set it so that when you open up Word, it goes right into the blank document setting. Uh, but most default, like when you first set up Microsoft Word, uh, this is how it will be there. And then you have some like templates to kind of start going into and you can start working with templates. I'm not going to cover templates in today's class. Um, it's something I may cover actually in our advanced class, which will be taught in two weeks. Moving on, uh, let's kind of continue looking at the interface here. Uh, over here, we have our uh, new uh, or our open to be able to open files if you want to open something there. Um, this is the, the new file interface on here. So once again, there's the blank document and then here's all the different templates uh, that they have. Uh, but we're going to just jump in and we're going to look at a new document, new blank document. I'm going to double click. We're going to go into here. And so this is the view in Word that you will generally be spending the most time in. This is your basic document view. Uh, so you have your blank page set up here that kind of shows what the page will look like. And, and Word is pretty close to what they call a what you see is what you get editor now. So what you see on here is likely what's going to end up getting sent out to the when you print. Uh, Word is very faithful to the print experience on there. Uh, up here at the top, we have what's called the ribbon. Now, the ribbon was first introduced into Microsoft Office 2007, uh, and it became kind of the collective interface on kind of navigating and accessing the different features as you're working in Word. To get around the ribbon, you, you, move, you move your mouse over kind of the different areas, and so things are kind of broken up into different categories based on kind of the features or the skills that they're offering. So you have your clipboard, so your copy, paste, and um, cut, copy, and paste over here in the kind of the top left corner here. Uh, you have your font controls. These here will take a look at kind of, or change how your text looks on the screen. Uh, so you have things like changing the font, changing the sizes here, uh, changing whether it's bold, italics, under, underlined, uh, strike through on there, uh, changing highlights or colors. We move over and we get the, and so these here affect the individual text and how the text looks. 
we get over here to the paragraph section and what this starts doing is this starts affecting how the text is arranged on the page so things like your justification is, is everything going to be along the left side of your page over here or are you going to do it right justified where everything's going to be right over here on the right side of the page or centered do you want to have all your text kind of be right here kind of squiggling through the middle of your page there uh, things like the um, the bullets um, and we're not going to really look at this year this is something that we'll be looking at next week uh, during intermediate class but being able to do like bulleted lists or numbered lists on there Moving through, we have the big section here set on styles. This is something that will also get looked at in our intermediate class, but just something here that you see, it does take up a lot of space, so it's obviously a very important part of uh, Microsoft Word, enough that it takes up almost two thirds of the ribbon on the home tab. Uh, and then we have things like edit, so find, replace, so being able to like find text or replace things. So if you wanted to like change out a word or like if you had a word that you were typing that was capitalized every time and you want to change it to lowercase, you can go through and do a replace on everything there. Uh, newer versions of Word, this may show up in Office 2016, it's definitely here in Office 365, actually have a dictate, dictate or a voice uh, view on there, which means that you can actually, uh, I could turn this on and I can actually just start speaking through my microphone and be able to actually have it put uh, voice to text right onto the page. Uh, moving on to continuing navigation in the... Um, in the ribbon up here the ribbon is broken into a bunch of different tabs and that's where we have these like little menu lineups up here and the, so we have our home up here we have our insert here uh design layout and you you navigate to those different things by clicking onto the different tabs so today we're going to spend a lot of our time here in the home tab this is kind of where we're going to spend most of our time this is where you spend most of your time in microsoft word doing kind of basic edits it's after you've created your document and you're doing like some of the, like the other refinements that you'll start digging deeper into some of the other tabs on there. But I'm just going to give you, give you a quick look through what these different um, uh, what these different tabs kind of show. So home is what we just kind of walk through everything that's on the home there. Insert allows you to insert different things into your page. So for example, you can insert in page breaks or blank pages into there over here on the left. Tables. Tables are basically gridded layouts that allow you to enter text in kind of a grid. Let me actually throw one up there and you can see what it looks like. So do that there. And so now I'm able to actually fill in kind of grids into the, uh, uh, in or text into the grid on here. And I can add new lines or add new columns as necessary. So it's similar to like working with Excel where you have the kind of the spreadsheet kind of set up here. But this year does, it's very simplified, doesn't have a lot of the math or the functions that Excel does. Um, but it, it, it's actually, this is a really good tool for doing layout kind of things. So being able to put text here or here to kind of make sure things line up on there. Uh, that back to insert, we have our pictures. So if you wanted to insert any sort of imagery to your Microsoft, uh, Word document, this is kind of where that all shows up there. And again, this is something I'm going to cover in our intermediate class. Um, Moving on, a lot of different kind of things. Links, so hyperlinks are linking to other documents. Uh, the header and footer areas here. Um, and then just some other things to kind of arrange that. As you get more comfortable and familiar with Microsoft Word, you might find um, a need for these kind of things. Uh, and that's where you'll kind of go and kind of dig in and see what that's going on there. Uh, design affects actually the, the look of your whole document. So like what theme is being used? So like what do titles look like? What do headings look like? Whether there's, what is like a hard rule or horizontal rule look like on there? Paragraph spacing, the colors that happen. Um, are you gonna put a border on your page? So just designing the whole page of the document itself on there. Um, by the way, during the stream here, you may notice me looking kind of up to the left or up to the right. That's just where I'm just kind of looking at kind of uh, your comments are up here to the upper left. So I'm just kind of checking to see if there's any comments or questions being sent uh, over here to the right. I'm just kind of making sure that my recording and my live stream, all the software there is kind of moving properly. So if you see me kind of glancing up, that's just I'm just those there. Uh, moving through, we have layout. This is where we decide things like margins and orientation. Is it going to be portrait or is it going to be landscape? And you can see when I change that there, it does change the, the look of the, uh, the editing document here. So again, it matches kind of how it will be printed on there. Uh, the size of the page they're working with. Most cases, you're not going to go in and change this very much. Everybody's going to be working. If you're in the United States, most of you are going to be working in letter size papers. So you can stay with the letter size 8.5 by 11 paper. Uh, sometimes you might be working on a legal size and then you can go in and kind of change that there. Uh, again, if, if you are going to be using these other types of paper, then you'll know that you'll need to change it when you're using it. 
time. So we're not going to go too, deep, too deep into there. Columns, this is something I will be covering, I believe, actually in the advanced class in two weeks. So uh, it allows you to kind of break your text up into different columns on there. Uh, references here, this gives us things like table of contents and footnotes and citations and bibliography. So if you're an academic researcher or you're writing an academic paper for school or for whatever, for, for work on there and such, this is areas that allow you to help organize your citations and your references on your document and make it easy to kind of enter in the formatting for those documents because things like footnotes getting entered down at the bottom of the page there and such, this will automatically assemble and kind of do that formatting down at the bottom of the page. Uh, mailings, this is where you're able to handle things like envelopes and labels and where mail merge happens. Uh, mail merge will be covered in our Microsoft Office integrated class, which is going to also be in three weeks. Uh, I believe it is the Thursday, the 22nd, uh, not 21st, uh, yeah, it's, it's in three weeks, uh, Thursday. I can't remember the, I think actually I can check the date here really quickly. Uh, let's look at April, and it's going to be here on the 16th, actually. You can see it right above my head on the screen. Um, and then we have our review tab. This is where things you get, like your spell check and the thesaurus or word count. Uh, things like word count actually does, if you look way down at the bottom left of Microsoft Office down over here, right behind actually where the Ferguson Library logo is, uh, this is actually our... Um, the word count as you're working. So if you, if you have a certain word count that you're looking for, whether it's higher or lower, this is where you can kind of keep track of that there. Uh, this little button down here will also tell you if you need to do spell check or anything on there. Uh, things like read aloud or accessibility. So there's a bunch of different things that help kind of like handle like reviewing the document for your own personal benefit or also reviewing for like a coworker or a collaborator that's working on the document. That's where the, the track changes and everything goes. But a lot of this here is things that are kind of beyond the scope of what we're trying to cover here in our basic Microsoft Word class. So let's go back to our home tab because that's where we're going to spend uh, the rest of this class kind of working on there. Uh, and just kind of a reminder, uh, if you do have any questions, please send it into the chat. Um, what you're seeing is just slightly delayed from how I'm currently doing it. So don't just keep sending the question. I will see your question and I will get to it uh, as soon as I can. Uh, if you, do, I'm, I'm going to take a little bit slower pace uh, when we start working on the exercises here because if you are going to be following along, you do need to have your own Microsoft Word installation on your computer, and you'll probably have to like bounce back and forth between uh, your browser window where you're watching the stream and Microsoft Word. Um, so uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show an exercise and I'll give some time on there and such. Go and try it out. If you have any issues, come back here and ask me a question. We'll kind of get it going. And when I feel like kind of everybody's kind of ready to move on, we'll move on to the next exercise on there. Uh, just a reminder, if you are looking for uh, the handouts for the class, uh, they are available on the Ferguson Library's website. And they are right here at this link up here, the fergusonlibrary.org slash online tech classes dash tech dash classes. Uh, the first tab that you see there will be basic Microsoft Word, and there will be a link there for uh, the handout and a link for a survey for at the end of the class. Uh, I would like for you to go fill it out. That would be uh, good. So again, just kind of take a look at the uh, right up here, uh, the address there. If you want to go get a handout to kind of follow along, uh, it will look like uh, this here. So I'll have like a, some basics kind of thing on Word, uh, things like keyboard shortcuts, and then... Um, a bunch of the exercises that I'll be working on here. So let us start with our first exercise though. So here, and so now we're back into Microsoft Word. Um, oh, and I forgot, there's actually one more thing to kind of cover with the ribbon. Uh, most of the most commonly used commands exist here on the ribbon. So being able to change things like the font or making things bold or italicized, but the ribbon can't, okay, yeah. but the ribbon cannot contain every single command that's in Microsoft Word. So if you notice down at the bottom right of each of the different boxes down here, there's this little um, this little arrow pointer. And what this does is this actually expands out to more options. So if I go and click the one here for font, I get the, the typical font options box. So this is the same font options box that exi has existed in Microsoft Word since like the mid 90s. Uh, it really has not changed very much, actually. Um, 
And so here you're able to actually have, uh, you're able to kind of pick which font you're using, the style, is it regular, italic, or bold. So you can, if I change this here, you, it will actually change it up there as well too, the size. So these are all the same things that are up here, but you can see we have some more effects. So uh, things like superscript or subscript. Uh, superscript is like the little number that's above, that the kind of floats above the text like an exponent on like a, a number, or subscript is something that shows up like underneath uh, down to the bottom a little bit. Um, and we have our advanced settings here, which don't really worry about these here. If you're really into doing a lot of stuff in Microsoft Word, you'll find the need for this here at some point. Um, here you're also able to do things like the color of your font, um, how the underlying style is. So you have a lot more kind of flexibility in these kind of option boxes here. Uh, and you'll notice that they're kind of on the home tab. They're here on every single one of these. Um, if I go into insert, you can see it's not on on all of them. In fact, I don't think it's on here on any of the insert ones. Go here to... Yeah, home tends to be the one that has kind of the most. So you can see over here, I come here to tracking and it's available on here as well too. That's just, that's the end of the ribbon. Uh, if you have any questions about that during the court rest of this class, please let me know. Just send a question through the chat. Uh, so let's move into uh, kind of our first exercise. Uh, so our first exercise is open a new Word document. I'm going to actually go through and do that again from the, um, from the start. So when you first open up Microsoft Word, uh, you're going to actually generally be in the home setup here, which will give you access to a lot of your recent documents that you've worked on here, as well as uh, access, quick access to create a new document or any of the templates that are happening. Uh, you can go here to the new tab and it gives you access to all the different templates that are here. Uh, we're going to click on blank document and we're going to go in and we're going to create a new blank document. Now you can see actually up here this is document two because it actually has both of my documents, document one and document two, uh, both existing here because I've created them both at the same time. So we're going to create, open a new Word document and then right here in the first line we're just going to type the phrase the quick brown fox jumped over a lazy dog. So I will give you a couple of minutes to go and open up a new Word document and type in the text for that. Um, and then we'll continue on with our next uh, exercise. Please let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so I hope you've all had access to be or uh, the opportunity to go in and type in our sentence, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So the first thing that we're going to do actually is that we're going to save our document. Uh, when you're working in Microsoft Word, you always kind of want to make sure that you're constantly saving your document. So, uh, and there are things uh, set up in Microsoft Word. It does have an auto recovery feature on there so that if your computer crashes or Word crashes, it will grab uh, it should have at least some part of the file that you're working on. Um, you may lose five to 15 minutes worth of work, uh, which is better than losing everything on there and such. 
Um, but I always find it's best not to always rely on those systems and just it's best to rely on yourself. So it's always best to save. And so you can save a couple different, a few different ways in Microsoft Word. I'm going to show you a bunch of the different ways. And my option, my select, or my recommendation is to choose the one that you're most comfortable with, and kind of stick with it. And something that's you can commonly do. So the most, uh, kind of the, the 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 most straightforward way is after you've entered in text into your document here, you're going to come up here to File. And we're going to come down and so this is the backstage view um, i was mentioning that part of the thing that we're going to be looking at in this class here is we're going to be covering the backstage view in the class um, so the backstage view is just this area here when i click the file tab i came in and opened up this whole new section here so again it gives me access to all the stuff i was showing you when creating a new document uh, you also have this list of menu options over here so you can take a look at like the information about your document here how long you've been working on it has it, has it been saved yet? How many pages? How many words? Put a quick information on there. Uh, this is where you can do different manage changes, uh, version histories on here. Uh, obviously, next couple of items down there are save options. So if I go here to save, since we have not saved this document yet, uh, save automatically becomes save as, which gives you an option to choose where you're going to save the file and the file name that you're going to give it. And so you could be, by default, we're here in our uh, documents folder. And so you could easily just go in and type in a thing here. I could do basic S word class, and then just click save, and it will save it right here in my documents folder. If I wanted to go save it in another location, I could browse through like another folder here in my, uh, my documents folder, or I can click here the browse. If I click browse, these, this gets me the typical Windows um, file browser window uh, that we all should be familiar with if you're, if you're familiar with Windows and working with Windows. And so now I can actually go through if I want to go to my desktop and save it on my desktop here or I want to save it in Documents. I'm just going to actually save this right here in Documents. And you can see as soon as I click that browse, it still has that same file name that I typed here as well as up here. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to click Save. And you'll notice that once I've saved the document, right up here at the very top in my toolbar, uh, it tells me the file name, and that lets me know that, hey, this file's been saved under this file name. So if you, do, if you are working on a file and you're not certain whether or not you've saved it or not, uh, and you look up to that title bar and you see, like, for example, the one I created before still says document one here. That tells me that has not been saved because document one, it doesn't have a file extension on it, File extension is these four letters after this dot. And what it does is the file extension tells Windows what, what type of file it is. So it's telling this is a docx file or a, a Word document file. This one here, because it doesn't have the, uh, the extension on there, it doesn't tell you. Um, it, it, Microsoft or Windows doesn't know that this is a Word document yet because there's no file for Windows to understand. So those are just kind of things to tell that if you're still seeing document one, two, document 15 up there, uh, it just means that you haven't saved your document yet. Uh, and this year also, this is kind of an updated thing that at least it's showing up on mine. I'm using Word 365, Office 365 here. This should also be similar in Office 2016 if that's what you're using. It will tell you that it's saved to this PC versus being saved to the cloud or something. I can, up I can upload it to OneDrive. There's a lot of integration into OneDrive. Okay, so now that we've saved the document, and so I was going to, I was going to tell, show you kind of the, uh, the other different ways of saving the document. So the other thing is, is now that we've saved it, if you look up in the top left corner, way up over here above the, the home and insert tabs, there's this little disk icon on there. And this is, this is a quick access toolbar. And what this is, is this is the save button. And so as you're going through, as you're typing and, and doing all the different stuff on your, uh, on your document, there's, um, adding some more stuff onto here. When I want to go save it, I can come up here and I can just click that button and it will automatically save the document. Um, you notice that as I started adding more text, it no longer says saved by PC right up here on the top toolbar on there and such, which means that there's been a change that's not currently saved. As soon as I click saved on here, it now says saved to this PC. So this is an indication about whether or not your file's been saved uh, and the, the changes that you've done lately are in place. The other way of saving that I am uh, actually, it's my favorite, it's the one that I use all the time because it's the quickest and it's the most convenient is to use the keyboard shortcut. So keyboard shortcuts are a combination of, of 
keys of key presses on your keyboard that will do different actions. And it's usually accompanied by using something either like the control, shift, or alt keys, which are down usually in like the bottom uh, left. I'm gonna actually hold up my key. And you can see right down here, we have alt, control, and we have shift. It may show up actually backwards on the screen there, because there's a whole mirroring thing going on. But you can kind of get the sense of like where those are on, the, um, on your keyboard. Uh, and so usually what you do is you'll hold down one of those there. So like you'll hold down control and then you'll hit like another key and it will do an action. So for in regards to saving, if I hold down control S, control S is save. Uh, control O is open. You can see I hit control O and it took me here to my open uh, dialog. Things like control P is print. So there's some very common kind of keyboard shortcuts that are useful to remember. Uh, but control S for save is probably my favorite way to save because it's really easy when you have your hands on the keyboard and you're typing along, it's really easy to just hit over, hit, hold on control, hit S, and then continue typing. You don't have to pick up your hands from the keyboard. You don't have to move it over to the mouse. Everything is ready right there on the keyboard. So let us continue with our exercises now. So we've, we've written our sentence, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy brown dog. We've saved our documents. Everybody saved your documents, right? Okay, so now we're gonna move into the next thing. We're gonna look at, um, uh, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna look at copy and pasting. I'm just kind of seeing what I'm doing on my outline here. We're looking at copy and pasting right now. So in order to copy and paste, in order to kind of make copies of this text on our, um, on our document here, we have to first highlight it. And so highlighting can be done a couple different ways. You can highlight with your mouse. So if I click here at the very at the right side of the line, so I'm clicking and holding down my mouse button, and then I'm going to drag my mouse to the left over the text. And you can kind of see I get this little like highlighter kind of thing, this gray highlight around it. It might be a different color on your computer. Um, it just happens to be gray on my computer and the settings that I have turned on for this. Um, it's typically, it was traditionally um, blue, I think, in Microsoft Word. So if you're using an older version of Microsoft Word, it might be blue. Um, but all that means is actually is that you now have the, you, you have the text highlighted. Now you'll notice that once I have this highlighted, I actually got this little toolbar that kind of popped up right above there. And this is a convenience that showed up in uh, Office 2010, I think. It was at least 2010, either 2010 or 2013 that they took elements, the most commonly used elements from the ribbon that we normally do with the text, and put it right down here. And now it's not showing up again. Oop. There we go. There. And so things like I can change the font, I can make things bold, I can make things italicized, I can change style, I can do all of that like right here instead of having to click and then move up to the top there. So they're doing things to kind of save your time as you're working. Uh, another way to highlight the text that might be, if, if you have difficulty using the mouse um, and you're still trying to, you're still getting a lot of practice using the mouse or you're on a, say, a, um, a laptop with the touchpad that may not be the mo most convenient thing to use, you can also select and highlight text using the keyboard. And you do this by hitting the shift key. If you hold down the shift key on your keyboard, and instead of typing letters to make capital letters, because that's normally what you use the shift for, you use the arrow keys. So you look at the arrow keys, which should be to the right of your keyboard. If, you're, if you have a full-size keyboard, there should be a set of arrow keys, an up, down, left, right. And so my cursor right now is at the right side of my sentence here. I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm going to hit the left button. And as you can see, as I move to the left, it starts highlighting the sentence. And I can hold it down to make it move faster. I can also just move it one at a time. If I've gone too far, I can hit the right button and go back the other way. So this actually ends up being uh, very useful for very precise selection. So like if you're trying to like select something, because if you notice when I do this here, it, it kind of jumps over the word. Uh, so I, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to get into like the middle of a word if I only wanted to like copy to here or something, um, or it'll do like the whole sentence or something. By doing shift, I can be very precise about what I highlight. So holding shift and then kind of moving over is, is also the version of selecting. So we're gonna go over here, and now once we've selected uh, our text, we wanna copy it. So Microsoft Windows has a concept what they call a clipboard. So whenever you copy something, it takes whatever you're copying and puts it onto this virtual clipboard. And then what happens is, is then you go to some place and you say, hey, I wanna paste something, and it takes whatever's on that clipboard and it puts it into that other place that you want to that you're, you're that you're pasting it to, and uh, 
Clipboards have gotten a little bit more complex. It, you, it, it generally the rule is is that whatever the last thing you copy is is going to be the thing that you paste. There are ways to have a fancier clipboard that you can have multiple things uh, clipped in there. And there's even fancier things happening with like say like web browsers now that actually allow you to like copy and paste things um, between like computers. But we're, this is a basic class. We're going to keep things simple here. We're going to highlight our sentence that we wrote here. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And now I'm going to come up here to the, the top right corner of my ribbon here in the home tab. And you can see we have paste, we have cut, we have copy. Now cut and copy are very close siblings of each other. Uh, the difference is, is that cut will copy this to the clipboard. So it's going to take it and it's going to go put it onto the clipboard and then it will delete it from the text there. So what it's doing is it's, it's cutting it out of your document so that you can then paste it somewhere else copy what it'll do is it will leave it in place here but then it will allow you to make copies of it so we want to make some copies so i'm going to come up here i'm going to click the copy button so now that i hit copy button you notice there's nothing that really changes all i did was hit the copy button nothing changed down here um but until i go and paste it so now i'm going to come down i'm going to click at the end of my line and i'm going to hit the enter key on my keyboard which is going to take me down to the next line uh, so now that I'm down to the next line, I'm going to go in and I'm going to hit the paste button right up here. I'm just going to go and click. And you notice when I put my mouse over this, this is another thing that happens on the ribbon here in Microsoft Word. Uh, the paste button here is actually two different buttons. There's this top part of the button here, which is your basic standard default paste. If I click it, it's going to put the line there. Uh, you can see now I've made a copy of my line right over there. If I, if I move down to the bottom part of this button here, where there's a second button, I click this here, it gives me a menu. For this class, don't worry about these paste options right now. We're just gonna use this top part of the button up here. I'm gonna click up here, and I'm gonna actually go in, and I'm just gonna hit paste five or six times, just to kind of get a bunch of the lines kind of going down uh, the course of my, uh, my document here. Now, you may notice that when you do this here, I've actually turned off a setting here. Turn this back on. You may notice that when you do it, you're actually going to have an extra space in between. And this is kind of how Microsoft Word is set up. It's set up so that when you do uh, what they consider different paragraphs, it puts kind of extra space in between those paragraphs. So this is properly how you're probably seeing it if you've pasted in these number lines. So I'm going to let you all go. Make sure that you've typed in the quick brown fox, jumped over the lazy dog, highlighted it, copy it. So you hit the copy button and then hit paste and paste five or six different versions or five or six copies of it onto your document. I'm going to give you about two or three minutes to kind of do that. If you have questions, please come back here and ask me in the chat. Thank you. All right, so has everybody gone in and pasted in their sentence a few times on there? Now, what happens if you pasted it in too many times? Uh, well, you can actually delete text. Everything. That, one of the nice things about working with a word processor versus our old-fashioned style of working with a typewriter is, is that everything's 
digital, everything's virtual, nothing's fixed in stone until you hit that print button and it gets printed out onto paper. Uh, I'm pointing over this direction because my printer is over in that direction. Um, so you can always make changes as you're working in Microsoft Word. Uh, and one of the most basic changes you can do as you're working with text is deleting text. And so there are two different ways to kind of delete text uh, on your, uh, in a Microsoft Word using either the backspace key, which lives up on the top right of your keyboard, or the delete key, which kind of lives in kind of, it, depending on your keyboard, it kind of lives in different kind of places. It'll either show up as delete, D-E-L-E-T-E, -E -E, or it'll show up as D-E-L on there. And the difference between the two, they, they both kind of, they both will delete text from your key, from your document, but they'll do it in a different way. So backspace will delete anything to the left. So if I go in and I'm going to, actually, I'm going to put my, my cursor right here into the middle of the sentence here, and I hit backspace. I'm going to hit backspace once. So it's, it's to the right of the word over. If I hit it once, it deletes the R. Hit it another time, it deletes the E. So it's deleting everything going to the left. Delete deletes stuff to the right. So if I come over here, I'm next to the word the, and I hit delete, it deletes the character to the right of the cursor. Hit it again, it deletes the H, hit it again, it deletes the E. So it's easy to remember that if you're to the left, or if you're to the right of the text that you want to delete, you'll use the backspace key. You'll, you'll back through your text. Um, if you're to the left of it and you want to delete something to the right, you'll use the delete key. My recommendation for this here is, is unless you're very familiar using your keyboard, uh, choose one and make it the one that you're using more often. Are you going to start from the, the right side of your, your sentence? So are you going to start at the end of your sentence or word and delete uh, back? Then use backspace. That's what most people do. That's why the backspace is a more prominent location on your keyboard than the delete key is. Um, or are you going to start over on the left side of the sentence at the beginning of the sentence or word and work your way to the other direction? Uh, but those are the basic ways there. So let's actually go in and we can, uh, we can delete some of our sentences. So I'll let you go in and, you know what, delete five or six words of one of your sentences. It doesn't have to be the last sentence like I'm doing here. You could do a sentence uh, up here in the middle. Um, and just kind of go in and kind of delete. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to go into your Microsoft Word and kind of do that. Uh, and then we'll be right back here. Thank you. If you have any questions, ask them in the chat. Okay, so everybody's had some practice uh, deleting text on their Microsoft Word document. So what happens if you've deleted something that you didn't mean to delete? Just like we are deleting stuff that we may not have meant to type, uh, you can also accidentally delete things. Um, don't worry, uh, there is a very useful tool to come back and save the day if you accidentally delete something. So if I go in and go and say delete, like all of this here, I'm going to go boop, and delete, it's gone. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So I've, I've deleted all of that there. So if you notice right up here on the very top left of, um, of our uh, Microsoft Word document such, we have this little uh, left pointing arrow. If I put my mouse over it, you can see it says undo typing. And so this is the undo button. This is gonna be one of your most favorite friends in Microsoft Word, actually almost anything in Microsoft's Office. Because what it does, it allows you to undo last set of actions that you've done so here I'm just clicking it a bunch of times and you can see actually it is now adding back in the letters that I deleted before uh, and it keeps going back this the the uh, undo history goes really far back 
Um, and it doesn't reverse. Okay, so actually, let me go forward again. And then there's a redo that you can do. So back, redo. Um, this, there's also a convenient keyboard shortcut for this here as well, too. Just like uh, Control S and Control P were used to, um, uh, to save or print, respectively, if you hit Control Z, Control Z will undo. So if you're ever working in Microsoft Word and you happen to click something and something changes or text disappears or jump someplace and it's like, oh no, what just happened? Uh, you, you feel like you may have lost like a whole bunch of work or something may have happened there's such, don't panic, pause, take a breath, and then go and hit the undo button. Come up here and click undo or click control Z and it should undo and, and hit that a couple times. If it, if, it doesn't do, if it doesn't change back to what you were automatically, um, just hit control Z until it gets back to looking the way that you want it to do. Uh, so when you're working in Word, don't be afraid of Word. Don't be afraid to try things out. If I wanted to see, oh, what happens if I click heading here? What does that mean? It didn't actually change anything in this case. And such. Feel free to experiment. Feel free to try these things out so that you can then, um, uh, so I, and if, if anything goes wrong, if anything changes or it doesn't work the way that you want to do or completely messes things up, you can always go through and undo whatever you were doing there. So that is our undo uh, ability there. Uh, so now we're going to move on to uh, looking at some basic text formatting here in Microsoft Word. Uh, so Microsoft Word, I mean, we're going through, we're typing in everything. And again, I realize actually my text probably looks a little bit different because I have my settings a little bit different. Everybody else is probably using a little bit different font. Um, that's what happens. We can change the font. We can change how it looks in Microsoft Word pretty easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight one of our sentences. I like this middle sentence right here. And I want to make this bold. So I want to make this text a little bit darker uh, than all the other text. I want to make it stand out to pop compared to the rest of my text. So once I've selected the, the text here, highlighted over there, I'm going to come up here to my the ribbon and to the font section, and there's this little B button. You can see the B here looks darker than all the other text that's around it. And that basically just means bold. I'm going to go and I'm going to click the B button, and it's going to turn my text bold. So now if I click there and such, you can see this, this now stands out from the rest of the text. You can also do the same thing with some of the other formatting. So if I go over here and highlight, say, this sentence here, I'm going to come up here and mark this as italics. I'm going to italicize it. And you can see now it, it kind of slants it. This is, this is what's considered to be kind of an emphasis style. So if you want, whereas bold kind of makes something kind of jump out, makes it kind of stand apart, uh, I tend to find bold useful for things like headings or kind of making uh, like, like line labels stand out or something. Italics are useful for kind of making, like kind of improving emphasis, kind of giving something a little bit more oomph or kind of making it stand out in the middle of a, uh, like a sentence. So things like titles, when you're, when you're typing a, um, like a title of a book or, um, or like a TV show or a movie in there and such, you'll generally make that italicized to kind of make it stand apart from the rest of your text. Finally, we're going to take a sentence. I'm going to highlight this here and I'm going to come up here. I'm going to click this little U. Uh, button which is underline what that does is that just adds a line underneath kind of again these are all different kind of things that help makes this text stand out from the rest of the text um all of these here can be done with the keyboard shortcuts as well too uh so let me just here make it easy bold is control control b uh, italics is control i well, if I type control properly and uh, the line is control U. So by, and you can actually see, it's pretty easy to remember. Control B for bold, I for italics, U for underline. So uh, go back to your Microsoft Word and uh, try practicing changing some of the sentences to bold, italics, and underline. Do it both by highlighting the sentence here and then clicking up in the um, uh, clicking up in the ribbon up here. And you notice that once I have, if I have this highlighted here as bold, you can see the bold button up here actually lights up. And so I can actually turn this on or off um, as I need to. Uh, so make things bold, take things out of bold. So try it both by clicking the buttons in the ribbon and using the keyboard shortcuts: Control B, Control I, and Control U. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the chat, and uh, I'll give you a few minutes to work on this. Thank you.
All right, so everybody spent some time making things bold, underlined, and italicized. So let's actually look at some other different ways that we can work on changing the, uh, the formatting of our text. So one of the common ways that you can also change the formatting of your text is by changing the font. So the font are all the different uh, looks that the characters, the, the letters and the numbers, can look um and these a lot of these here actually have a long history to them some actually very interesting history between the different fonts um uh and it all comes from when they were they were actually putting little pieces into the printing presses to be able to do like the actual printing press and a lot of that has transferred over into the uh the digital age and a lot of the terminology that was used by printers and printing presses has also transferred over so even like the word font and um, uh, you see things like kerning or uh, line spacing. There's a bunch of those different kind of things that got transferred also over into our digital age simply because we already had terminology that we're using and we just kind of tried to replicate how the physical world worked. And that's what kind of Word does a lot. Word kind of like replicates what a printer or printing press kind of did, but we just get to do it digitally and we get to have a lot more uh, and everybody can do it right from their own computer or mobile devices now. But I'm getting a little bit too far out of uh, the course of the cl class right now, so let's go take a look and change the fonts of our of our uh, text. So just like you've been doing with uh, with highlighting for copying and pasting or making things uh, bold, italicized, or underlined, we're going to highlight the text that we want to change the font. So I'm going to actually choose another sentence here that I haven't changed yet, and I'm going to come up here and the. The font box up here, the top part of the font box has these two little boxes next to it here, these two drop down menus. The one on the left is actually the font selection. And what they'll do is they'll give you, I have access here, I might have more fonts than you or however you're using it there, but whatever fonts, you can scroll through and it'll give you kind of, a, a, kind of an idea of what that font looks like. But if you move your mouse over and select one without clicking, don't click it yet, you'll see over, over in the, uh, that it will actually, can't really indicate because I can't move my mouse cursor over there and such, but you'll see that the text actually previews what that what that uh, change will look like. So it allows you, you can actually go through and kind of just scroll through and kind of see your text change to kind of a bunch of different styles. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go down and I will choose a style. Uh, I'll choose something that's a little bit kind of standout. Stand off. Let's see. Something that somebody may do all may have as well too. So let's actually go down to Jordan. Nope, those are so fun. Um, I typically always ever do everything in Times New Roman. Not like I actually look at all the other fonts that I have available. Okay, let's go down and do this. The impact. You can kind of see that that jump. It kind of stands out from the rest of the font. So I'm going to go down. And I'm going to choose impact, and I'm going to click on it. And now that font there is different than all the other ones there. All the other uh, text that I have. I can also change the size of the text as well too. By highlighting it just like I did before and I have my other drop down box over here and so there's two different ways that we can actually change the size of the text one of them is you can you can drop this down and you can choose the size of the font and so this font is what they call point fonts and so 12 is uh, 12 or 11 is typically the default now the default in Microsoft Word uh, since Word 2016 has been Calibri size 11 or 11 point font uh, before that, the default for the longest time had been Times New Roman size 12. So that's why mine set at size 12, because that's what I've been using for so long. But there's a variety of kind of different sizes here, and you can kind of see if I move my mouse over, I'll see how, all the different sizes of the font there. So if I go up and make this, say, like a 24-point font, about double the size of what it was before. Uh, also, as I mentioned, there's two different ways. Right next to our font drop-down or a font size drop down here are two little buttons. And these are like up or down. So the, the one to the left will make it bigger. The one to the right will make it smaller. Uh, and so this is a, another way you can kind of quickly like just click up to the size that you want or click down to the smaller size. Um, so again, I'm gonna make this 24. So go in, choose two or three of your sentences, change them to different fonts, uh, change them to different sizes, kind of play around with kind of those different options on there. Uh, to change the font sizes. Uh, so I will give you another couple of minutes to do that and let me know if you have any questions in the chat.
Okay, so does everybody spend some time playing around with the different fonts and the different font sizes? Um, we have just a few more different skills that we're kind of going to go on and kind of cover in this class. Uh, so the next thing we're going to look at also is what they call the justification. So now we're moving on from like the individual text formatting to actually looking at the formatting of the document that we're working on itself. So when I say the word justification, what it generally means is, is where is the text lined up on your document? So by default, and I keep using that word default, default is basically the, the basic setting, the, the setting, the automatic setting that Microsoft Word opens up to before you go in and choose anything on your setting and such. This is what the automatic setting, the default as it's called, uh, is set. So the default in Microsoft Word is to be left justified. And that's this button right here uh, in this paragraph section. You can see we have four different buttons right along here. There are these little lines drawn on them. They give you a sense of what the justification is. And so what left justification means, it means that the left edge of our text, this line right along here, all of these letters, all of these T's and coming down, all of these B's, they're all lined up on this invisible line on the margin. The left justified means that everything is justified or lined up onto the left side of your document. The right justification means that everything will be just would be justified or lined up like so like the right side of all my sentences will be lined up against the right side of my document along the right margin. Center justify means that everything will get centered in the middle. So longer sentences will go out. And so what happens is you'll start typing right here in the middle and it will actually move out to both sides automatically so that everything kind of stays centered. Then there's this fourth one, which is called full justify. They say justify, but what it is, it's full justification uh, is the other term for it. And what full justification will do actually, it won't, we won't actually see it a lot on these sentences here. But full justification will actually like even out onto both um, on both sides of your uh, document, on both sides, on both margins. So it'll actually like, push the text. With full justification, depending on if you have like a lot of long words or a bunch of short words, you might end up with actually like some extra space between words because it's trying to make sure things line up. And what it does is it gives you this nice, neat like line, block line on both your left and right side. And let's see if I actually have something that I can actually show you. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just go take a look at something. I can show you quickly what that full justification will do. Actually, let's... Before I do that, let's go and when we come back after doing this exercise, I'll show you the full justification. Right now, let's actually take a look to see what these justifications look like. So in order to change the justification for um, a line of text or, or several texts, you don't have to just do one line here. I can do all three lines if I want to. Uh, it's the same process that we've been doing with all of our other changes. You highlight the text that you want to change, and then you come up and you choose the options that you want. So I want to take these and I want to right justify them. So I'm going to click the right justification button. You can see now it moves it and pushes it over against the right side. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add these here. Both of these here are also to right justification. Kind of see a little bit of the difference. Because I made this sentence here bold, uh, the, the letters are just a little larger than the, the non-bolded sentences up here. So you can see actually this here now runs out and it's all lined up on this side here. This runs out a little bit longer to the left because this sentence is a lot larger. It pushes all the way out even a lot further. These sentences here, because I did not select them and change the justification, they're still on the left justified. So they're still lined up on the left side. Um, let's take these here. I want to put, say, these into the middle. So I'm going to click the center justification and that will put them right here into the middle. Now, if I go in and add um, this will make the text darker and a little larger. You can see as I add text to my sentence there, it spreads out evenly to the left and right to kind of make sure that it's always kind of centered into the middle of my document. Uh, this one here, this will make the text lighter and slim. Right. And so you can see again, it kind of makes, as I'm typing and adding things in there and such, it makes things even on both sides. So this is, the center justification is the really easy way to kind of get centered, like if you want to have a heading, that's something that says like chapter one or part one or uh, Microsoft Word justification lesson, if I put that at the top here, um, it'll be right in the middle of your document. And so in that, that centering, 
will adjust. If I change my margins, if I made my margins larger or smaller to kind of stretch my page in or out or squish it in, it will change the text, it will fit the text to make sure that it still stays centered. The right and left justified will just ride along with whatever margins they add. So go back uh, to your Word document, uh, play around, take some sentences and put them over on the right, take some sentences and put them over on the left using the justification, uh, put some things into the middle, uh, and just kind of have a little bit of fun with it, kind of see kind of how the, all the different things look and how it works. Uh, you can easily swap between different justifications by just having it selected and just clicking through the different buttons. Uh, and when you come back, I'm going to show you just a, a brief example of what a full justification looks like. Um, uh, it's it's not used all that often. It's used actually um, when you look at um, you look at like a newspaper. Actually, the newspaper columns are full justified, so they they actually have like an even square on the the left and right. And most book pages, most books are also printed as full justification. But right now, play with left centered and right justification. And I'll give you a couple of minutes and we'll come back and we'll look at the center justification and continue on with the next skill that we're looking at. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the chat. Thank you. Okay, so let us go back. I'm going to show you this here. Is, okay, so this here is the text for the um, for Alice in Wonderland. Actually, it's actually one of the exercise files that I use for one of our later classes. Uh, the useful thing about it is, is there's just a whole bunch of text that I don't have to type. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to highlight this paragraph here. I just want to show you quickly kind of what the full justification looks like. So I'm going to highlight this. And I'm going to come up here, I'm going to click the full justification. And now you can see, actually, that it lines up neatly over on the, the left side, over on the right side. But at the same time, it also kind of increases some of the space between the words uh, than, than were there before. And the reason for that there is because it has to kind of stretch the lines. Because you can see, when I change back to left justification, the word at the end of the lines doesn't change, but it takes up extra space. 
Um, so full justification, what it does, if I choose all three of these paragraphs and do this here, it just makes this nice, neat kind of block look on there. So that's all that full justification is. So I'm going to just close this, uh, save, and we're going to come back actually to our document that we've been working on. So the other common thing that people want to do in Microsoft Word to kind of change the formatting of their text is to change things like the color or like the color that's behind the text. And so those fall under two different tools. You have text color and then you also have your highlight color. So text color is the actual color of the text itself. Highlight color is the space behind the font or behind the text, what color that's going to be. So the highlight is like, for example, if you've ever used a highlighter, uh, you draw the highlighter of the pen, you can still see the black text on there and such, but there seems to be like a yellow or pink or blue kind of bar over it. You can simulate that in Microsoft Word. Let's look at the highlight thing first. So I'm going to take another one of my sentences. Here, this is why we copied and pasted a bunch of sentences, because we're doing a whole bunch of different transformations on this. Take this here, and I'm going to come up, and right under the font section here, there is these two little buttons here. And this, again, just like with the paste button, there are two buttons here, just like over here. So if I click on the left part of this button here, it will automatically apply the, whatever the default color that's selected. So right now the color that's selected is yellow because highlighters were typically traditionally yellow. Um, if I click over on the right, this little drop down box here, I'll be able to actually choose the color that I want to do. Uh, and so there's like a limited selection of colors here. Um, so if I wanted yellow or I wanted the blue or like a pink, I mean, these actually tend to be kind of these top four are like the, the fluorescent highlighters that you probably used in school. Uh, these are kind of the same colors that there. But if you want it to be a little bit more subtle, you can kind of choose one of the other colors there. Um, so, but if I go and just click this here, you can see now it just uh, colors a yellow bar behind my text there. So the text is still readable. Uh, you do want to make sure that your highlight color is a color that stands out from the font of your text. So if I go up here and I make this uh, black, you can see I can actually hide my text. I can actually like simulate like redacted uh, bars when you get like a document that's been censored or something um, on there. Even something like this purple here, if I choose this purple here, you can see the black text is really hard to read against the, um, uh, the purple. So in that case, if, if, you wanted, if I wanted to use this purple color, um, I'd have to probably change my font color. So let me do that as well too. I'm gonna highlight it, just like I've been doing with all the other transformations that I've been doing and formatting I've been doing in this class. And we're gonna go over to and do this next, this right button over here. And once again, there's two parts. I can make it red automatically by just clicking the A here with the red underneath, or I can click the menu here. And you can see, actually, I get a lot more options with colors than I do with the highlighter. More so than if I come down here to more colors, I can actually, I can actually have a very specific color that I want, so specific that I can go in and actually enter in specific RGB codes. Uh, if you're going to play around with this and such, it's, it's, worth fun, it's fun to kind of go in and play around with that there. But for the purposes of the class, we're just going to leave it nice and simple. We're going to just use some of these standard colors there. If I choose yellow, the yellow stands up better against the purple background that I have than the black does. If I choose yellow, I've now changed my text to yellow and the purple on there, and it just kind of makes it stand out. We have a little bit more color kind of showing up on there. So I'm going to send you back again for a couple of minutes. Uh, go in, highlight some, highlight a couple of your sentences, change the highlight, change the color, see what different color combinations work, what kind of crazy things that you can get. Let me know if you have any questions in the chat, and uh, go have some fun. Thanks.
Okay, so has everybody spent any time doing their uh, highlighting and text color changing? Excellent. So, um, the final thing actually is a couple things we're going to do. We're going to look at two more things. We're going to look at actually copying and pasting text from another source into Microsoft Word. So we're going to go actually grab something from the internet and we're going to bring it and we're going to put it here into Microsoft Word. And then we're going to look at how, like actually playing around with the line spacing. Because you know how sometimes in school you're always told, hey, make things, you have to hand in your papers being double spaced. Uh, so we're going to look at kind of that line spacing on there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at copying and pasting from another source into Microsoft Word. So go into your web browser. Make sure that if you have the um, uh, if you have my stream open here in one tab, that you click the the new tab button browser here. Uh, you want to click the little new tab button to make sure that you go off to a new tab and not close my stream here. I'm going to a new tab, and I'm just going to recommend just kind of go to like Wikipedia because um, we're just going to grab something here. Um, and search for a topic of your choice. Uh, I always search for polar bears, so we're gonna grab polar bears here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this whole introductory section here. So from the top here where it says the polar bear down to uh, the end here, right? Everything be before the contents. I'm gonna grab this here. And I am going to come up to edit, and I'm gonna click copy. Um, I could also right click and hit copy, or I can hit, use the keyboard shortcut control C. Uh, thank you, Nicole, for uh, watching. Uh, we'll have a couple more classes. Take a look at our schedule. We're going to have uh, Excel tomorrow um, and then PowerPoint on Thursday. So now that I've copied this here, I'm going to go back to my Word document and I'm going to go down to a new line. I want this actually to be left justified. Remember where your justification is. Your cursor will tell you where your text is going to end up being put. And I'm going to come up here. I'm just going to click the paste button. And you can see. Sure, yes. So as you can see now, when I pasted this in here, go to so this one goes one page. There we go. Um, it brought in all of the text and put it right here into my uh, uh, my document here. So I was able to take something from the internet and put it into my Word document. So go out and try that with kind of whatever text you want to use. Um, I just use Wikipedia because it's a reliable source for just text to be able to grab and put into Microsoft Word. Um, but yeah, so copy it from Microsoft Word or from Wikipedia or someplace on the internet and go paste it into your Word document. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the chat. I'm going to give you three or four minutes to kind of work on this. Thank you.
All right, so if you tried copying and pasting from the internet into Microsoft Word, excellent. Uh, any questions? Now we're gonna look at one more different thing. We're gonna look at the line spacing. So one of the things by pulling this out here means that we got a whole bunch of text that we didn't have to type. Um, and like mine, it probably may have come in single space like this here did. Whereas if you look at all the other stuff uh, that we've written and played around before, it's all been double spaced before. There's been an extra space in between the lines. We can easily do that. We can change the line spacing in Microsoft Word fairly simply. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight the text that we wanna uh, use. Sorry, the water burp going on there. Uh, highlight the text that we wanna adjust, just like we've done with everything else that we've worked on. And we're gonna go up here underneath this paragraph. On the paragraph here over on the right, there's a little um, paragraph settings button. We're gonna click that to open up the paragraph settings uh, box. And if you notice here, we have things like the alignment. Remember the left, center, and right adjustment? Those are right here as well too. So if you, I mean, it's easier to click the things right here on the ribbon, but if you're in this box, you can also adjust those things here if you want as well. Um, but we're gonna go here and we're gonna actually go to this line and page breaks. Actually, is that right? No, it's not, sorry, it's not right. Uh, what we're gonna do is actually, we're coming down to this third section down here called spacing. And so there, right over on the right, there's this line here that says line spacing. And what we're gonna do is if we drop down here, we have an option for doing things like single, one and a half lines in between, double spacing, at least exactly. In most cases, you'll just come in, if you wanna double space your text, you're just gonna come in and you're just gonna do double. You're gonna hit, then you're gonna come down and hit okay. And you can see now what it did was it went in and it added in extra spaces between all of our text. Uh, and so that's the way, if, if, you're, if you're writing on something and you know it has to be double spaced, you can go in and set that double spacing at the beginning. Or if you're just more comfortable having all of your text together and then do the double space at the end, you can do it anytime. You can change it at any time. It's one of the beauties of working in Microsoft Word is that nothing is bound in a place. Uh, you can always change things and fix things as you're going through and go back and change things. So that has been basic Microsoft Word, uh, some of the skills that we've kind of gone on and covered on there. Uh, next week, on Tuesday, at the same time, uh, from 2 to 4, we'll be continuing our work in Microsoft Word, and mainly we're going to be looking at, if I go over and we're going to look at this insert tab, we're going to look at how to insert like a bunch of different things into our Microsoft Word document. So if you're interested and want to continue with your skills, please join us next Tuesday from 2 to 4 uh, on our YouTube channel here. Uh, tomorrow, I will be doing uh, an introduction to Microsoft Excel. So I'll be doing some basic Microsoft Excel work tomorrow, also here on the YouTube channel. And then on Thursday, we'll be starting with PowerPoint. And if you can follow all of this here at the uh, Ferguson Library Online Technology Class Resources page here, which is available at um, uh, the address right up here, Ferguson Library, you can see right up there, I have it uh, posted. Uh, fergusonlibrary.org slash online dash tech dash classes. We have our upcoming class schedule there. Uh, keep an eye on that there. So um, as I come up with more classes that I'm gonna be offering towards the end of April, they might be showing up on here. Um, and then we come down and various handouts. Right now I have it set up for today's class and tomorrow's class on here. Uh, the PowerPoint class will show up on there. So for tomorrow, if you're gonna be joining us, come here, click basic Microsoft Excel, and there'll be a couple of handouts here, as well as our post-class survey. Speaking of the post-class survey, um, I would appreciate that if you did attend this class, uh, come here to the link here, or um, go to this address here, the projectoutcome.org slash responses slash 50591, and that will take you to our post-class survey where you can kind of just fill in your reactions to the class. Uh, going forward, if you want to continue practicing with Microsoft Word, the Ferguson Library does offer access to uh, lynda.com, and on your handout, uh, on the handout that uh, went out, I'll show you, down to the last page, uh, there's a link here to Ferguson Library or to the lynda.com. You'll want to go through this address here, lynda.com slash portal, all of this here. If you just go to lynda.com, they're going to charge you for a subscription. You go right through here, you'll be able to sign in with your Ferguson Library card information. 
and uh, you'll ask for Ferguson library card number and your PIN, and you'll have access to everything that Microsoft or everything that Lynda.com has to offer. And so I've highlighted a couple different courses that they have for here. And let me just kind of show you what Lynda.com is like. But yeah, Learning Word 2016 and Word 2016 Essential Training are things that will kind of continue uh, what we've worked on here in this class here. Uh, the easiest way to get to it is if you come to the Ferguson Library's website here, fergusonlibrary.org, and under Learn and Explore menu, come down to Research, and we're going to go to the A to Z databases. And we're going to go down to L for lindo.com. And you can see it's clicked right here. It's located right here. I'm going to click on the link, and it's going to take me here. And now this will ask me to sign in with my uh, library. Oh, you're not seeing this. Aha, hold on. There we go. Let me go back and redo that again. So if you're at the fergusonlibrary.org's website, let me reload this up again. You're going to come here to learn and explore. We're going to go down to research and A to Z databases. And then we're going to go down to L for lynda.com. And we're going to click that right here. And then it'll ask for library card number and PIN. And you can see under the library, there's a whole bunch of different things that it offers here. Great learning experience on there. This is just another feature brought to you by the Ferguson Library. Uh, as a final note here, go back here so we can kind of, uh, again, please go in and fill in the surveys um, there. And then also uh, our upcoming class schedule again. Let me just quickly go over that uh, here. So this is today's class here, the basic Microsoft Word. Tomorrow I'll be doing Microsoft Excel from 2 to 4 here on the YouTube channel. Uh, on Thursday I'll be doing PowerPoint. And then next week we'll be doing intermediate version of Classes. We're going to take the, the we're going to go one step further from the basic uh, skills and start building on what you're able to do in these programs. The following week, on April 14th, I'm going to do an advanced Microsoft Word class uh, that will look at different things like tables of contents and working collaboratively with other people. And then on Thursday of that week, April 16th, I'm going to do Microsoft Integrated that will look at how to work with Office, Excel, and PowerPoint all together. As a singular uh as a singular unit and kind of the different things that they can do working with each other and then uh, at the end of the month on april 21st i will be doing uh introduction to web building i'll be doing html and css class here on the channel but keep an eye on our social media channels and our other uh, marketing that we do at the library there'll be more stuff going on as we move into april uh, so if you have any other questions feel free to send them into the chat here i'll stay here for a few more minutes to see if there's any questions coming uh, otherwise, you can go onto the Ferguson Library website and you can uh, talk to one of our librarians using our virtual chat feature or contact us using the Contact Us form. So thank you very much for attending Basic Microsoft Word with the Ferguson Library. I hope to see you tomorrow for Basic Microsoft Excel. And once again, thank you. Well, once again, I'm going to throw up the, the survey link to go in and fill in the survey there.
So if there's not any questions, I'm going to close out the stream. Thanks for anybody who attended. Uh, feel free to join us tomorrow. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us through the Ferguson Library's uh, online chat. Thank you, and I hope you all have a great afternoon and stay safe.